jasonbloodchurch.org coming to you today. God bless. Hope all is going well. I'm going to look at the book of Acts today. I'm going to take a look at one of my one of my favorite stories from the the, the Bible and the book of Acts. Um, it is Paul who is in Athens and um, he's going to see a city full to idolatry and and the Greek philosophers and their fickleness and, and the ways that they you know listen to story after story looking for the truth and of course finding it not. So we look at chapter 17 of Acts verse 6 the Bible reads, Now while, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. So again, Paul goes to the Jews, being a Jew himself of nationality, and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Verse 18, Then certain philosophers of the of the Yet Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him, and, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Verse 19, And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speaketh is. So, you know, they definitely are interested. Uh, but they're interested in many different gods. Verse 20, the Bible says it to Acts 17, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. And so, you know, you have two basic philosophies here that are going on. That of the Epicureans, which are eat, drink, and be merry, and, you know, just enjoying yourself in life. Where the Stoics, they, they, they were, if you look at them, they were tough, upper lip, you know, sort of uh, take it like a man, you know, be, you know, and what you're told about these educated Greek philosophers is that they're very superstitious, agnostic, very feminine in nature and ignorant. Um, and you can see some of these things in the future verses that we'll look at here in a second. Verse, um... So, of course, they want to hear all these things. Verse 21, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So, 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of the Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you... You ignorantly worshipped him, dare, declare I unto you. So he calls them out for the idolatry. Verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in the temples made with hands. Amen to that. Neither is worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breathe and all things. Verse 26, And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. All right, so the word blood here, um, it's been often removed from a lot of the corrupt English Bibles, you know, no doubt about that. Yeah, so anyway, just to bring that of note, Verse 27, that they should seek the Lord, if, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our beings, as certain also of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So, you know, beautiful verse. We're all, you know, we're all children of God. Verse um, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. All right, so I already read that one, sorry. Verse 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. Verse 30, and the times of this ignorant God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. 
All right, so he's certainly telling them to repent here. Um, sort of giving them a last chance, you know, sort of giving them a warning uh, that, that their evil ways of idol worship and, and, and graven images and are not what God wants them, you know, to do, to be, you know, to be about. And, um, you know, we're all his creation. If you saw there in verse 29. It's nothing to do with man's spiritual state. The offspring of God and the children of disobedience and the children of wrath. Even if you're not saved, you're, you're an offspring of God. But the context here is to repent because God is going to judge them all by his son based on what they do with Paul's gospel. And, and he's, he's telling them to repent. He's telling them about Jesus and the cross. Verse 31, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Verse 32, And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, Will we hear thee again on this matter? So Paul departed amongst them. So he definitely gave them the word. So an interesting story. I sort of like how he, he dealt with it. God bless. I hope this was a blessing. Have a good day.